in some cases, it is apparent that faced with competition from a digital company, a bricks and mortar competitor is at sea. Barnes and Noble is a very nice chain of US bricks and mortar bookstores. James Riggio purchased Barnes and Noble in 1971 when it had a single store in New York City and over his first 25 years as owner, built it into a thriving Fortune 500 company with hundreds of stores and billions of dollars in revenue. But Barnes & Noble has struggled for 20 years to find an effective response to Amazon.com ever since the Amazon website went live in 1995. By my count, even now, Barnes & Noble meets only nine of the 19 criteria for a bricks and mortar product company to compete effectively in business analytics. Barnes & Noble's stock price was $37 in 1995. It was still $37 10 years later in 2005. 10 years after that in 2015, its stock price is now $27, a decline of 28%. By comparison, during those 20 years, the S&P 500 index is up more than 8% per year continually compounded. Over the past 20 years, Amazon.com has slowly crushed the life and joy out of Barnes & Noble. Over the 17 years since Amazon.com went public, its stock price is up 350-fold, an annualized return of more than 32%. News item, April 2014, Barnes & Noble chairman Leonard Riggio disclosed his second stock sale in five months reducing his interest to 20% from 30% last year. Barnes & Noble shares dropped 12% on the news of Mr. Riggio's sale, which he said he made for estate planning purposes. Maxim Group analyst John Kinker, who has been bullish on Barnes & Noble in recent months, described the sale as, quote, obviously negative, unquote. Barnes & Noble has tried its own e-reader to compete with Amazon's Kindle, the Nook, and its own website, bn.com, but both efforts seem underwhelming. Understandably, as the company does not want to turn itself into a pure online competitor to Amazon, a market where it has no competitive advantage. The Nook and BN efforts do not enhance any competitive differentiation between Barnes & Noble and Amazon. They erode it. To me, Barnes & Noble's basic value proposition is as a place to gather with other people, maybe sit and study or have a cup of coffee, while surrounded by books. There is the pleasure of people watching and the chance that you might meet somebody over a book, something you'll never get on Amazon. Perhaps the only way to survive long term while selling this kind of intangible would be to persuade people to pay a cover charge at the door, just like a bar that offers a live band. Barnes & Noble is, in fact, a kind of old-fashioned club. Essentially, people are paying to be with other people who like or love books while being surrounded by tons of very expensive physical inventory. Right now, a $25 Barnes & Noble membership offers a 10% discount, and it's not mandatory. Maybe a higher and mandatory membership fee would take Barnes & Noble all the way to exclusive club status. What do you think Barnes & Noble could do to survive and hopefully thrive again someday? I'm interested in your thoughts and comments.